Welcome. Well, you're at home with Jim and Joy, and you are an important part of our EWTN family. And we're delighted that you've welcomed us into your home. You know, we want to hear from you, so send us an email with a question or your comment to Jim and Joy at EWTN. Dot com. Well, today we have a wonderful guest. Yes. His name is Alan Miglaredo, and he is the author of a great book called The Manly Art of Raising a Daughter. And is it hard to raise a daughter? Yeah, but he has some great answers for you. You could go to his website, adventurecatholic.com. A lot of good information in the book. The manly art of raising a daughter, a lot of wisdom here. And he says, Our Lord and Satan are in a fierce mm -hmm. battle for the soul of your daughter. If God is to win, you must do your part as a man, leading her as the good shepherd leads us all. You've got to stop being an overworked, out of touch father and become the firm but gentle leader of your home. Mm. And, uh, he didn't always know that, by the way. Mm -hmm. You know, because chapter one is just an amazing chapter, just in his own life and a little confrontation with his daughter that kind of called him out on something, and which led to a deeper conversion, his right. return to, to, to the church. Um, so, you know, we're all on, on a, journey, a journey, learning <laughs> men, women, boys, girls, mm -hmm. moms, dad. And uh, it's been a great joy for me to be a father to two precious daughters mm -hmm. and two sons as well, Anna and Rebecca, identical twins. What a blessing. They are a blessing. And uh, it's just so amazing. And I could see them being born now. I had the blessing of being with you as you delivered them. The excitement of all that, the pain of all that. And when she was delivered, she wasn't even breathing. And so they had to resuscitate her. That was, that was pretty stressful. And then the Rebecca just came out and she just mm. kind of came out mm -hmm. and uh, it was a beautiful thing. But you know, every life is a precious gift. Every life is a miracle. It just takes one or two things to go wrong and yes. you don't have these yes. children. Um, my brother has identical twins as well, yes. Mary and Martha. So I have Anna and Rebecca, my brother Pasquale, Patty, has Mary and Martha and just beautiful. We have many sets of twins in our family mm -hmm. line. Um, but it's a unique thing being a father to twins, yes. you know, because they're so tight, as you know, and they can really team up on you, know, team up on the mother or whatever. <laughs> and they have. <laughs> uh -huh. But uh, it's been great to be with them. And I think with twins in particular, um, you know, I mean, the teaching throughout the book of the manly art of raising, he speaks about dating your daughters and so on. And you really have to spend special time with each one of them, not mm -hmm. just together, but each one of them. Right. And to let them know, I really don't, do, I may get confused every now and then, but I really do know who you are. And you can see who they are through their spirit and so on. And spending time and trying to get to know, you know, what they like, what they love, what concerns them, what are they afraid about? What sports do they like, or whatever it might be, and because uh, it's unique to each one, a lot mm -hmm. of things are similar, and it's been a joy. And I continue, you know, to do that with them. Yes. And I hope that I've been a good father to them. They've been an absolute delight in my life. And between the two of them now, they've given us twelve grandchildren, yes. living grandchildren. Mm -hmm. Others have been miscarried, but it's a beautiful, beautiful gift that they've. God has allowed them to bring forth the gift of life. They're so pro-life, so dedicated to marriage and, and to life. Nothing but a blessing. Well, and I think that the difference for us in our household with raising these daughters, who were Italian daughters, and that's a whole nother breed of a, a <laughs> human being, um, we yell a lot, we talk a lot, we have loud voices, we are very opinionated. And, um, I'm glad you said all that. <laughs> no, it is all true. And, um, but the, our daughters are beautiful, holy women of God, and we're very, very proud of them. And by God's grace and by God's great mercy, they have wonderful spouses. They're mm -hmm. great mothers. They have um, doing just a great job, and we're very blessed and proud so, of them. Alan Migliorato, the author of The Manly Art of Raising a Daughter, AdventureCatholic.com, AdventureCatholic.com. Don't go away. Plenty more to come as we approach Father's Day this coming Sunday. Don't go away.
Welcome back. Well, you are at home with Jim and Joy, and we're excited to bring to you this fine gentleman raising daughters, and he's authored a book about it, Alan Migliorato. He's the author of a book called The Manly Art of Raising a Daughter. Does such a thing exist? Yeah, it does. You could go to his website. It's called Adventure Catholic. Dot com. Well, Alan, we want to welcome you to At Home with Jim and Joy, and we're delighted to have you. We want you, first you to tell our family a little bit about Alan, a little bit about your story, where you're from, and then we'll delve into your book. Okay. Um, I've been married since 1993, uh, the same woman, so that's, <laughs> that's I get a plus good. for that. <laughs> um, I have uh, three daughters. Uh, they're 16. 18 and 22. I'm supposed to say hi to them all by name. And you're and smart. So, so I'm not going to do that. <laughs> um, <laughs> and um, I own my own business in the Orlando area, and that's a sign and advertising company. And um, that, that's all about me. Good. Perfect. Well, Alan, back in the green room, Mother Angelica's old office, uh, you know, we were just sharing, getting to know one another. And but you said you're from Ohio, Youngstown, Ohio. Right. And I don't know all that much except Steel Mills and Boom Boom Mancini was that's a, all that was a there. wonderful <laughs> boxer. And then you share with me that your dad was a boxer. Right. And uh, share a little bit about him and about his boxing and some of the people he knew. Uh, one so of the um, my dad um, was a professional boxer and, and we moved to, to Florida um, down with uh, Muhammad Ali's uh, boxing camp. We moved to Miami in Fifth Street Gym yeah. and then we came back up to the Orlando area when he got a, he got a different manager and kind of went his own way. But I've been around boxing um, literally before I could walk, mm -hmm. yeah. you know? And yeah. so, I, I mean, that's kind of what I knew growing up, growing mm -hmm. up and, mm -hmm. you know, it, it played a big part actually in raising daughters, believe it or not, okay. mm -hmm. which is a funny thing to say because you think, you know, if you have daughters, they're, they're not going to be in the boxing ring and yeah. I, I don't want them in the boxing mm -hmm. ring, but I do want the confidence and how to defend themselves and how, well, you how to have confidence. You have a chapter teaching your daughter to fight. There right. is a chapter called yeah. Teaching Your Teacher How to Fight. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. Tell us about that chapter. You don't want them really to fight, but you had some really great wisdom in it. I don't want them to have to fight. Right. But I want them to know how to defend themselves. And it's not, it is physical. You know, it is a physical thing. I want them to have the confidence to know that, you know, that they can handle themselves if there's ever a boy. God forbid that mm -hmm. doesn't listen to their, mm -hmm. you know, their restraint or their their borders, mm -hmm. their boundaries. Um, but more so, you know, they need to protect themselves spiritually because yes. that happens quite often. It happens daily. Yes. And so, without that that confidence to have um, to stand up for your beliefs, to have the fortitude, you know, and and that prudence to just say, "This is what I believe in," mm -hmm. and God is first in my life. I, mm -hmm. That's a big part of how I raise them. Mm -hmm. Let's go to God is first in my life. Right. You start your book, sharing, you know, about yourself and very involved in the business that you are establishing or working in. And um, I think something was said like from one of your daughters, like I don't have a dad or something like that. Yeah. that did she say that to you or to your wife? No, she said it to my wife. I, let me, so, I, let me set you yeah. up with the story. Mm -hmm. um, and by the way, I'm gonna probably interrupt you, I'm Italian. So <laughs> if you need to come out, go like cool this and <laughs> just have somebody throw okay. something. It's okay. Um, so when I started my business, you know, as most men do, you think, I'm, what can I do to provide for my family? And the very first things that, that comes to mind is money. I'm going to make sure that they don't they don't want and they don't they don't need. There's nothing mm -hmm. out there that they're going to ever need. They're going to have food. Mm -hmm. They're going to have shelter. They're going to have clothing. And then you're successful with that. And as a man, you're like, I did well. Mm -hmm. What else can I give them? And so you work harder right. and harder and harder. And what you forget to do is you forget to take time for family. Mm -hmm. And so I was working seven days a week. And I mean, I was I, working my fingers to the bone. Mm -hmm. And my, my family would come to see me on Sunday, and my daughter made a, a comment to my wife walking away. She goes, why, why doesn't Daddy going to church with us They would today? come to see you. They would come to at see work. me at work. Oh, wow. At work, yeah. you know, yeah. so that I could, I could see yeah. my family. And my oldest daughter said, why isn't Daddy going to church with us? And, and um, it, just, it just was one of those things, mm -hmm. those voices that are kind of distant, but they're extremely loud in your head. And so I got home that night, and I said to my wife, I said, well, you know, Angela said, you know, why isn't dad going to church with us? I guess it made me feel horrible. She goes, well, you know, you're doing what you have to, you know, and I, it, it's understandable. I understand. And it was still, it was just kind of like mm -hmm. that dripping heart, you know, and I was thinking, this is horrible. So the next morning, let me, I'll get right to it. The next morning, I had to get up early to go to a, an appointment. And I left before my daughter woke up. And when my daughter woke up, she said, where's dad? And my wife said, he's gone. She meant that I was gone right, to work, right. but my mm -hmm. daughter took it at the time. She was very young. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, 
that uh -huh. I was gone. Uh -huh. And mm -hmm. so she started crying. And my wife, of course, thought it was uh, like fun, humorous. Yeah. And she's mm -hmm. like, oh, look, she's crying because she thinks you're gone. Mm -hmm. And she told me about it when I came home. And I was just like, that's it. Like, you know, you can't ignore certain voices from God. Mm -hmm. And that was a voice I felt that was from God. It was right in my heart and, and, and made me say, you know what? I'm not working anymore on Sundays. Yeah. I'm just not going to do it. If mm -hmm. I lose money, I can replace the money. If I lose my family, that's something I can't replace. Right. And really what was happening was the Holy Spirit was arresting you, right? Like you said, something got dropped. It was way deep and it, it was unsettling. It was unnerving you. And what God was trying to do was to just change the kaleidoscope to say, Alan, this is what's important. You can trust me for money. I love your daughters more than you love your daughters. I'm going to provide, but let's get your house in order. Right. Right. It wasn't a voice that I was probably listening for mm -hmm. as well as I should have been. Mm -hmm. And it, prob it definitely wasn't a voice I was very familiar with. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. it was one of those things that I felt weighed on my conscience. And as a young man, I felt sometimes I just kind of pushed that behind me mm -hmm. and said, I'm going a million miles forward with my head first and I'm going to, you know, run right through whatever wall is there. Yeah. And that wall was, I couldn't get through, was the Holy Spirit telling me, spend time with your family mm -hmm. before you don't have a family to spend time with. Right, yeah. right. That's, it's hard sometimes to make an adjustment like that because you really kind of got a vow within yourself about the work ethic and providing this is what you need to do and it's, it's an inordinate principle. You know, it and it's not a first principle, maybe second or third, care for your family, whatever, but God has to be at, at the center. So it isn't even like you were about a bad thing, you're about a good thing, right. but it wasn't the, it wasn't the central thing mm -hmm. that it needs to be. Everything else springs forth from that hub is go back to church, go back to the Lord, get it centered for your own sake, for the sake of your daughter. So what difference does it make when a man returns to the church, to, to the sacraments, to that way? What does it what difference does it make in a daughter's life? I, I saw some amazing changes happen when I stopped working on Sunday. And, and by the way, eventually I stopped working on Saturday. Within like a couple of months, I was mm -hmm. like, I got to have a day with my family, mm -hmm. just my family, uh, going to a park or whatever. And then we're going to take my family to church together. Yeah. And so um, it's so important because my daughter saw that something was greater than money mm -hmm. in my life. Mm -hmm. yeah. It, there was something greater. There was something that I was looking to that I'm leading my family in a new direction. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as my kids grew, it was great to see them argue to see who was going to sit next to me in church. Right, you know, right. who's going to sit next to me? Because my wife's going to sit on one side. Mm -hmm. Who's who sits mm -hmm. next to me in church yeah. today? Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. How beautiful is that? Right. Yeah. Now, the, some of the things that you your daughters and this is the beautiful thing about being a parent and even a grandparent. It really is out of the mouths of babes. Right. I mean, where God uses our children to really to say, hey, what are we doing? Where is our value? What other ways have your daughters challenged and changed you? Um, you share a beautiful chapter in there called Shut Up and Listen. Tell yeah. us about that. So one. you thought this is going to be about your daughter. It's going to be about you. <laughs> yeah, so I'm supposed to shut up and listen. So I can't say anything. Right now. We'll just go to silence for the next 30 seconds. Um, one of the hardest things uh, I think for men to do. And by the way, when I say this, I, I don't want it to sound like I'm finger waving. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not shaming. Mm -hmm. I'm not finger waving. I'm not trying to tell somebody they're not good as good, but I am telling people they aren't as good as they can be right. with God. All of us, uh, all of us. Mm -hmm. Right. And me included. Um, mm -hmm. One of the hardest things to do for men, I think, is listen, is to just, we want to fix things. You know, there's, there's, okay, there's a squeak in that door. Let me go get the oil and fix mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the squeak needs to be there. You have to kind of listen, you know, and that reminds you that there's a door, you know. I know it's a weird thing to say, but mm -hmm. that's how I think of things in a strange way. Mm -hmm. So shutting up and listening was one of the things that I, I was a big changing point for me. Uh, my middle daughter, Andrea, uh, was on a basketball team and just was surrounded by, I'm going to be just straightforward as I always am, you know, there's a bunch of girls that were on this team that were doing drugs, that were sleeping with one another, mm -hmm. and honestly, it's straightforward laughing at my daughter because she wouldn't go to practices or games on a Sunday unless she went to church right. first. Mm -hmm. And, you know, even we were out of town, we'd go on, on these um, these tournaments, right. mm -hmm. basketball tournaments, and my daughter would say, you know, I can't be there at that time. We have to go to church, or mm -hmm. I can't, I can't hang out with the team because I have to go to church. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't something that she regretted doing, but she was getting really harassed. And like, I grew up in a boxing family, and so like, you're harassed, 
tough it out. Mm -hmm. People are going to harass you your whole life, so mm -hmm. deal with it. Mm -hmm. I wasn't listening. I was mm -hmm. going by what I was taught in my past, which was toughen up. Right. Don't be a snowflake, mm -hmm. right? right? Mm -hmm. There's a difference between allowing your daughter to be a snowflake mm -hmm. and right. showing her right. you need to stand up and use your right. fortitude. Mm -hmm. And so eventually, like, uh, you know, was was a team captain, but then the following year wasn't because, like, being demoted right. kind of, mm -hmm. just kind of bullying her, you mm -hmm. know, all over the place. And and finally, you know, I, I, she, I just, was just looking sad. For, I mean, it was sadness. You could, you could feel it, you know, just not herself, not happy, not cheery, not laughing, just constantly always moping and wanting to sleep late and then would come home from practice, you know, and just kind of drop her bag and kind of, you know, mm -hmm. shuffle into her room. And mm -hmm. I was like, I said, what's going on with you? You know, you're, you're just looking different. Is, there, mm -hmm. is everything okay? She's like, I just really don't want to play basketball. Mm -hmm. And it, it was, again, one of those voices yeah. that was like, I heard you, I finally heard you. Mm -hmm. There's that movie Avatar, it says, I see you, right. you know? I finally saw her, mm -hmm. you know, I finally saw what right. she was saying. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was a huge failure at my part because I should have listened to her before. Instead of treating her like my daughter, I was treating her like a basketball prospect, mm -hmm. yeah. a college prospect, mm -hmm. you know? And yeah. I didn't need to do that. It right. was, I was trying to, you know, I guess live my glory through her or wanting to see her succeed because she was very good at basketball mm -hmm. but it wasn't what she wanted yeah, you know right. and so finally i listened and i said okay tell me what's going on and i just shut up mm -hmm. you know and as she was telling me these things i i finally told her i said listen i'm never ever going to stop loving you there's nothing you can do that's ever going to make me stop loving you that's ever going to change my opinion of you i love you mm -hmm. and i want you to be happy so mm -hmm. if this if this is what's going to do it if this is what you feel will make you, you know, a better person, then don't play basketball. I right. could care less. Right. You're more than that. You're more mm -hmm. than, you're mm -hmm. more than, you know, yeah. Yeah. a great point right. guard. Mm -hmm. But it is a hard thing as a parent because you do want to, I mean, we've did this with our kids and we've done, we've been in more gyms all over the place, but, <laughs> and you said, what you start, you finish. Yep. You know, we made in a financial investment, you're committed to the team, yada, yada, yada. But if it's, you know, and you, and you want, you want to learn that lesson, you just can't do it and then quit, you know? Um, but when it's taking the joy, <laughs> totally robbing her of the joy in her yeah. life, and she was, she was being defiled, and she was caught in something, you know, and she was saying, Dad, help me, you know? And right. that's where we, you, you did such a beautiful thing. First of all, you listened, you admitted, gosh, wow, I should have listened to you back then, you know? Because, honey, I, I wasn't listening to your heart. I wasn't listening to what you were saying in that. Yeah, you know? and it's such a hard thing for men to do is to swallow their pride. Like, mm -hmm. we don't even want to ask for directions, mm -hmm. you know, let alone admit that, hey, I screwed up, I'm mm -hmm. sorry, you know? Mm -hmm. and you, you know how we are. You know, you guys are Italian. You're like you, you react, mm -hmm. and then you're like, <clears throat> I could have done that better. Oh, yeah, that. Oh, there was. I shouldn't have said that. Thirty ways to do that better, <laughs> or say that better. And, yeah. You know, it's a lesson that I learned, and I, I mean, and I still to this day will react too quickly at something, mm -hmm. but I catch myself a lot yes. quicker. That went on for a couple of years, mm -hmm. you know, and mm -hmm. and. I, I never let them quit anything. Yeah. That was the only mm -hmm. thing where I was like, okay, if this is really yeah. right. you, and we got to watch ourselves too, because it's not whatever makes you happy. That, right. That's, mm -hmm. are we talking about happiness? Right. Are we talking about eternal satisfaction? Right. You know, mm -hmm. eternal joy. This is very right. different. Mm -hmm. But I just was not putting, letting her put God first. She, she taught me a lesson. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, this all goes back to your decision to go back to church. God is the center, trying to listen to the voice of God, really spending time with the family. Because your principles are good principles. Don't quit what mm -hmm. you begin. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. Stand up and, and fight, don't run away. That's all good. <clears throat> if you weren't listening to the Lord, if you weren't back in church, if you weren't, this has to be my way or the highway, you wouldn't get that, that witness in your spirit, that conviction. You say, hey, there's more going on here. Some, something's not mm -hmm. right here. This, my line of principle in this particular case isn't going to bring to fruition what the Lord's will is for her. You're a good guy. A lot of our people are good people with those principles. Other fathers you know, might not have any principles at all. So sometimes even us who are doing so well in the areas of principles have to be adjusted by an intimate relationship with the Lord and listening to the Holy Spirit. Um, let's take a break at this point, and we're going to hold you over for the next segment. Okay. Uh, the book is The Manly Art of Raising a Daughter. Go to adventurecatholic.com. Hope that you're enjoying uh, this, this sharing time as we near Father's Day. We'll be right back. Don't go away.
Alan, we just have a couple of minutes, and I'm, I'm looking at the title, A Manly Art of Raising a Daughter, which I, I get. There's many people in our society that don't get it, I think, that would actually feel offended by manly. What do you mean? It sounds chauvinistic. Uh, is there really any difference between a man and a woman? Um, how do you defend your title? Well, there's a big difference between a man and a woman. Yeah, I mean, if not only physically, <laughs> but I mean also spiritually. We're supposed to believe in everything visible and invisible as, as in our creed. And so we're created with masculine souls and feminine souls, and we have to give those respect and honor by being masculine. Mm -hmm. But the word masculine or manly is given a bad twist by society because they think of masculine or being manly as I'm going to rule with an iron fist, mm -hmm. I'm going to oppress women, mm -hmm. I'm going to cheat on my wife, I'm going to, you I'll know, be if, dominating. Yeah, if mm -hmm. I'm not drink, if I can drink the most beers, I'm, <laughs> I'm the best man in the room. Mm -hmm. That's not what we're called to be as men. That's not what God calls us to be. God calls us to love our wives like we love the church. That's what we're told to do. And if we can empower the women in our lives to to love God and what a what a great uh, role model that mm -hmm. that would be for our children. Jesus empowered Mary, right? Mm -hmm. He 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 encouraged he encouraged that relationship with us and Mary. And that's what we're supposed. That's how we're supposed to to treat the women yeah. in our lives. Mm -hmm. That's masculine. That's being masculine. That's yeah. standing up, being brave, being honest. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know. And and he gave her Joseph. St. Joseph, mm -hmm. right? I mean, man among men other than our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I mean, the Lord could have just said, well, you're going to have this son who's the Savior of the world, so if you don't need a foster father for him, uh, you know, a husband for yourself. But he gave Joseph. So there is it's something. An important role. Yes. There's a mm -hmm. strength, there's a power, there's a unique soul that's there in the masculine to help encourage uh, women along the way. And they us. It's not good for man to be alone. So we need women. Women have power over us too for our own happiness and our joy. It's not good to be alone. You won't fulfill the love that I have for you. You have to give it away. Not to animals and creatures and this, you know, the, the moon and the star and the skies. There's a woman and a woman's not complete without the man. Uh, so yes, for manly uh, raising of, of women, uh, of, of daughters. So we're going to break here. Okay. We're going to pick this up again on Friday. Thanks for unpacking so important a reality. So you're hearing the word today. There's a great battle for the soul of our daughters between Satan and our Lord and God. And he's placed men there in a unique way to be affirmers of women. And it helps to bring them into the great fullness that the God has for them. You're always at home with Jim and Joy. Keep it on EWTN. Bye now.